Finance Minister Patrick Chinamasa has banned first-class travel for government officials and reduced the number of diplomatic missions. It's all part of efforts to cut government expenditure. Chinamasa has told lawmakers he'll collect $5.1 billion in the next financial year and expects to spend $5.8 billion. The deficit will be financed through domestic borrowing. At 5% of GDP, this is in line with his spending target. But some are skeptical. The proof of the pudding is in the eating. Obviously, the statements, some of them sound uh, very nice, but the question is, are they going to be able to walk the talk? Uh, my concern, though, is that uh, we still have got a budget deficit. Although it will be reduced, how they have been happier with the situation where we resort to cash budgeting, where we live within our means. The minister anticipates economic growth will jump from 3.7% this year to 4.5% in 2018 on the back of investment promotion policies. Generally speaking, I think it's a very fair uh, budget which we look forward to. The issue of opening up to the international community is paramount. Uh, we cannot live in isolation forever. The contentious 51-49% empowerment requirements have been done away with in all sectors, save for platinum and diamond mining. Policy clarity and policy consistency. And this is what you are trying to achieve. So I wouldn't say it's complete, but it's part of an ongoing process to make sure that Zimbabwe is the best mining investment destination in Africa. The Education Ministry has been allocated the largest portion of the budget with $905 million. It's followed by the mainstay agriculture sector with just under half a billion, home affairs at $453 million and defense at $420 million. Farai Mwakutuya, CGTN, Harare, Zimbabwe. Now, while presenting his budget in Parliament earlier on Thursday, the uh, Finance Minister said his proposals are vital to revive a devastated economy. The budget makes a bold statement on the adoption of a paradigm shift towards, and I quote, towards a new economic order, drawing from the inaugural speech by His Excellency the President, Comrade D. Munangagwa, on 24th November 2017. Mr. Speaker, restoring market confidence remains extremely important to the country's recovery process. Accordingly, we strive to institute measures necessary to deal with the following issues. Cash shortages, including foreign exchange generation, unsustainable fiscal budget deficit, corruption and indiscipline, all right then, Farai Mukhtar covered the 2018 budget in detail today. He's live from the Zimbabwean capital uh, right now. Farai, good to see you. So let's start with something that didn't happen in the budget. Uh, the former finance minister, Ignatius Chombo, I understand he's been released on bail. Tell us more about that. Well, indeed, he has been granted bail after more than two weeks uh, behind bars. He was granted bail this evening uh, at his court ruling. He's uh, been released on a 5,000 US dollar bail and has some quite stringent reporting, uh, you know, uh, requirements. He's required to report to the nearest police station three times a day. He's also been asked to surrender the title deeds to one of his properties uh, and uh, will be appearing in court uh, on those charges uh, later on. Um, he, he was also also released from uh, uh, you know, custody today was uh, the Youth League chairperson, Kudanai Chipanga. He was released on a $500 bond, Rama. Indeed. So let's move on to the budget. Uh, quite a lot of data here. Walk us through the highlights. What stood out? Well, I think the key things are that uh, Zimbabwe is on course to achieve its 3.7% growth projection for this year. Next year, it's been projected at 4.5%. And uh, I must say that the finance minister said he was upbeat and confident that uh, the country could actually beat that uh, on the back of some of these policies that he's introduced, uh, in particular that uh, uh, move on indigenization, essentially scrapping it except those two sectors. He's saying that everywhere else, it's open for investment from anyone of any nationality. 
Uh, there are also measures to speed up the uh, ease of doing business environment in Zimbabwe. Uh, there have been a tax breaks that have been given to independent power producers, and that should see an in increase in the number, uh, well, in the number of people who are taking up power projects, but also the amount of energy that is chipped onto the national grid. Uh, tax amnesty has been extended to individuals and businesses, particularly SMEs, uh, who can come forward. Uh, there, are no, there are no penalties or interest charges uh, as long as they can regularize themselves before uh, the end of June next year. So uh, on that front, a lot has been happening, but also a lot of saving, cost-saving uh, measures there. Uh, diplomatic missions will be cut. Delegations that go on international trips will be reduced. Where Zimbabwe has uh, you know, an embassy, those people at the embassy will represent the country. Uh, and also, I think, uh, quite interestingly, uh, Zimbabwe has maintained a freeze on uh, uh, re recruitment in government, except for very critical posts. So, uh, you know, there's a lot to take in, a lot to digest, but on the whole, I think those are some of the key highlights, Rama. Indeed. We heard some reactions from the package, of course, that you've filed, but what about the, the business community, the ordinary man on the street? How do they react to this budget? Well, I think a lot of people are saying that this is positive, this is pragmatic, this is essentially what the country needs. Saving is what we need. We need to, you know, cut our cloth, cut, uh, you know, cut our cloth according to what we have, uh, not overspend. Uh, there is a, a slight uh, budget uh, deficit there, but certainly within the target that uh, the new finance minister, well, the finance minister has set at 5% of GDP. So people are welcoming this. They are saying it, what, it, it's what the country needs to go forward, that we'll see more investment coming through it's investor friendly but I think a sentiment that's also coming through from a number of people is implementation is key this looks great on paper but let's see the government walk the talk now and actually do these things that it's said, said that it will Rama indeed one last question for you so that indigenization law amendment platinum and diamond mining very intensive in capital and labor as well but given the economic damage you've seen in the last decade and the poor state of public finances Where's the government going to find the money to put up its stake, essentially, of that 51% that it says must be held either by the state or by ordinary Zimbabweans? Well, Rama, uh, the setup of uh, the uh, indigenization policy, particularly in the resource sector, is that by virtue of the resources that are underneath the ground, so the platinum that we have here, the platinum deposits, those diamond deposits, they make up the government uh, stake or the, the national stake. So that is uh, our 51 percent, the, the platinum that is in the ground, the diamonds that are in the ground. So no further cash will be put up in terms of meeting that 51 percent threshold. So I think that sort of answers that. But I think a lot of people are also ans asking why these two particular sectors. And I'd imagine, given the strategic nature of platinum, its, rev its revenue um, you know, generation capacity, uh, given the fact that we're, it's one of the biggest contributors of foreign currency to this country, uh, and also, I think, uh, you know, the fact that, uh, you know, government has uh, feels that, you know, there is potential revenue losses in terms of under invoicing, amongst other things. Government will want to have a, a say in that and a closer look at what's happening. We've also suffered, you know, uh, tremendous losses, particularly on the diamond side, uh, revenues that have been accounted for. There's been opaque operations there, really not clear. And again, I think this is a sector where government is saying we want to be involved, we want to have a stake so we can control and, and have a greater say in terms of the resources here. So uh, I think that's the thinking and the reasoning behind the government's uh, stance on these two particular subsectors of the mining sector, Rama. Indeed. We'll be there for the time being. For Aymak, they're live, of course, in the Zimbabwean capital, Harare.